Hey, uh, my name is uh, Jose Barzolo. Uh, welcome to our cultural talk story. Uh, I'm here with Mats Institute for Peace in the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Today's event will focus on being a Native Hawaiian in the Peace Corps with Kamaka Diaz and Christina Estrada. Uh, thank you for joining us to sit down at our table to learn about Indigenous nations near and far. Our co-sponsors are the Peace Corps and the University of Hawaii at Manoa Office of Civic and Community Engagement, um, which is a service learning program at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. During our talk story session today, uh, we will have Peace Corps, Return Peace Corps volunteer, or RPCV, uh, Kamaka Diaz, who will share his perspectives on being a Native Hawaiian, uh, living abroad and working for the United States government. Uh, so definitely, thank you for joining us to find out what it's like to be a Peace Corps volunteer from Hawaii, trying to navigate between promoting Hawaiian culture and the United States culture, while also figuring out the difference between both. Um, we're gonna to start today's event by introducing our special guests. Our moderator today is Christina Estrada, who was an agricultural volunteer working in the next generation of farmers in Paraguay between 2018 until 2020. Um, fortunately, she was evacuated, which led to her service as an AmeriCorps volunteer in 2020. And currently she studies in the Department of Natural Resources and Environmental Management at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, where she researches human disturbances and their effects on soil health and plant communities. Also, our main speaker today is Kamaka Diaz, a Peace Corps recruiter at the University of Hawaii, Manoa, is a native Hawaiian from the Big Island of Hawaii. He grew up in Hilo, attending Hawaiian immersion schools all his life until moving to Kaiser High School on Oahu his senior year before leaving to Madagascar to serve in the Peace Corps for three years. Kamaka attended the UHM, attended UHM and graduated with a BA in communications and a minor in Spanish, uh, having studied abroad twice in Spain and then Argentina. Uh, he started to fall in love with different cultures, travel, and learning new languages, which led him to join the Peace Corps. He hopes to share his unique perspective and experiences with others to encourage them to step out of their comfort zone and possibly even join the Peace Corps. It is actually quite a treat because this year we have two Peace Corps recruiters uh, on campus, and that is Christina and Kamaka with us. And so to get us started, I'm going to turn it over to Christina. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you guys for joining. Um, thank you, Jose, for hosting us. Um, and I'm sure Kamako will go through a lot of um, Peace Corps things. But if you have any questions at the end, um, you can put them in the chat. And then I think Jose probably has control over the other social media. So if there's questions on that end, he can also grab those. Um, and I'll let Kamako take it away. <laughs> Hey, aloha everybody. Mahalo for having me. Mahalo for the awesome introduction, Jose and Christina, my co recruiter. We're very lucky here at UH. We got two people doing this job so we can reach a lot more people. And it's nice that we're opening up at UH. You know, I, I saw some people on campus. It feels almost normal. We're almost getting back to where we used to be when I was there in 2016, or I guess I graduated 2016, but I was there for five years. But yeah, let me just share my screen real, real quick and then we can start. Uh, cool. And like Christina said, if you have any questions, just put it in the chat and then we'll, we'll talk stories after this is done. It shouldn't be too long. <laughs> so aloha everybody. My name is Kamaka Diaz. I'm from Hilo, Hawaii. I served in Madagascar from 2016 to 2019. I was in the education sector, so I taught English to a bunch of sixth graders and 10th graders. I had two sections of 50 sixth graders and two sections of 70 10th graders in a small rural community called Alatsinani Bakaru. And for those who don't know where Madagascar is, it's on the opposite side of the world from Hawaii. It's off the coast of Mozambique. So it's a country in Africa. And I know a lot of people just probably know Madagascar, like the movie, the cartoons, but it's actually a real place and it's very diverse and cultural. And there's actually a lot of similarities between Hawaii and Madagascar, which I'll talk about later. So Hawaiian is my first language. I grew up going to Hawaiian Immersion School on the Big Island. I went to Punanaleo, which is a Hawaiian Immersion Preschool, Kaumeke Ka'el, the elementary school and then school on the big island. So a lot of my upbringing was based around Hawaiian practices, Hawaiian culture. So that was instilled in me in an early age. So by the time I finished college and I went to Peace Corps Madagascar, uh, a lot of that was, 
I took a lot of that with me and I, I used that um, throughout my service, you know, trying to gain new perspectives and using my upbringings to relate to the people in Madagascar. So before I, I talk about Madagascar, I want to know, we have Mandy and Alex. Have you two heard about the Peace Corps? How familiar are you with the Peace Corps? If you heard about the Peace Corps, can you just put the hand up? You know, that little emoji that put the hand up. Oh, okay, our thumbs up, thumbs up even better. Shaka would be even better. <laughs> okay, cool. So I'll, I'll just go over the, the goals of the Peace Corps real quick, and then we can continue on. So the, the goal of the Peace Corps is to promote world peace and friendship by fulfilling three goals. Number one is to help the people of interested countries in meeting their need for trained men and women. So that's the primary sector where I taught English. So besides that, there's two other goals which kind of go hand in hand, which is to help promote a better understanding of Americans on the part of the people served. So that's me telling people in Madagascar all about America, all about where we're from and teaching them our culture. And like, what do Americans sound like? What do they look like? What do they eat? And this is the goal that really, really confused me at first because I was living in a foreign country trying to pro promote American culture when American culture was the thing that was foreign to me. So I struggled a lot with a little bit of my identity because I consider myself native Hawaiian first. I don't, I don't consider myself American. So I had to do a lot of reflecting on that because here I am working for an American governmental organization, but trying to promote Hawaiian, you know, Hawaiian culture. And when we talk about Hawaiian culture, the culture here in Hawaii, a lot of it is mixed as if you live over here, you see there's a lot of Asian influence, you know, we take off our slippers, we eat a lot of rice, all those things, all a lot of the local food, you know, spam musubis, Portuguese sausage, eggs and rice, it's a lot of local culture. So when people would ask me in Madagascar, oh, what do Americans eat? What do they sound like? I, I would always struggle trying to tell them what it was like, because I, I know what my culture is like. I, I know that, you know, I, I love to eat Kalua pig, lao lao, and all these other things. But my American counterparts, you know, they probably eat mashed potatoes and I don't know, something else, whatever they eat over there. <laughs> but here, it, it, it's so unique, right? Where we have this melting pot of different cultures that make Hawaii, that makes Hawaii Hawaii. So I, I really had to take a step back and reflect and try to find a way to, to navigate through that. So uh, let me go to the next one. And the, the third goal of the Peace Corps is to help promote a better understanding of peoples on the American surf. So that's like me coming back here and telling people about Madagascar. But we're gonna concentrate on the second goal because that was the one that really confused me. Uh, Hold on, let me just do this. Um, trying to make this go big. Uh, okay. Oh man. All right, there. What's going on? I don't know how to move on. So, oh, okay. The zoom, the zoom uh, bar was blocking my thing. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I got to figure it out. I was, in, I was in Madagascar for a while, okay? I'm a little behind on things. I'm still trying to figure things out. But yeah, so this is me in, in Madagascar. And as you can see, the Malagasy people, they, they, look, they don't really look stereotypical African, right? They look, they look a lot more Polynesian to me. So what's interesting when I went there is I found out that the Malagasy language is actually similar to the Hawaiian language. And Hawaiian is my first language, as I mentioned before. So when I got there, I learned, I learned it super quickly because the structure is super similar. There's a lot of similar words as well. For example, bava, which is mouth in Malagasy. In Hawaiian, it's baha. Uh, sky, 
Lani in Hawaiian. In Malagasy, it's Lanitra. And same with the numbers. Pitu Valu, that's seven and eight in Malagasy. In Hawaiian, it's Ehiku Evalu. So there's a, there's a lot of similar things in the language. It's in the same Ashtonesian family. And also, let's see how it goes to this. Hey, Kamaka, just want to give you a heads up that uh, you're still sharing the, the screen about the Peace Corps mission slide. Oh, okay. So if you're planning to share something uh, differently, I can uh, I can stop your sharing and then uh, I'll let you start sharing again. How about that? Oh, I'm sorry. No, don't worry about it. I, I, it sounded as though you had a photo you wanted to share, so. Yeah, I thought, I thought everybody was looking at the photo, my no, bad. No worries, uh, but yeah, you, you go right ahead, start sharing whatever you'd like now. Uh, okay, share screen. Okay, can you guys see this now? Yep, we see the hair. <laughs> okay, wow, I was talking about this, I had no idea. <laughs> okay, yeah, so this is what I was talking about when I talk about Malagasy people. So that was my host mom in Madagascar, Lalaina. And as you can see, they, they don't look stereotypical African. They're, they're more like Polynesian looking, in my opinion. Yeah. So, yeah, and we have other pictures too. Okay, right there. And so same with the food. So a lot of the food is similar. They grow taro, they grow sweet potato, breadfruit, all of those things. And this is in my hand is called Ravi Tutu. It's cassava leaves. So what they do is, can you see it? No, oh, you can't? no, but I'll, I'll do the same thing. I'll stop your sharing and now you can start sharing again. I hope you have. Okay. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. Well, I'll just, I'll leave it at here, but uh, my, my bad. I didn't know this is going to be an issue, but mm -hmm. for example, this is cassava leaves. It's, uh, it's, uh, cause, um, we call it Ravi Tutu where it's kind of like if you ever had squid luau where you, you mash it up and you put it with pork or something, but instead of squid, we, we use pork. So that, that's what we had. And then, a lot of rice, all of that stuff. So um, I guess I can't show people pictures. Um, you can, I, I can help you stop sharing and then you can share again. How about that? Okay, yeah, let's try that. Yep, no worries. Okay. Uh, stop. So if I do this, does that work? We, yep, that actually does work. Okay, okay. Woo. hey, we're learning. <laughs> Part of the Peace Corps is being resilient and finding out how to get to things. <laughs> so th this was my classroom. So I, I even got to teach my kids about Hawaiian culture. I showed them movies like Moana. We got to sing the songs, they got to sing it. Uh, and it was, it was really cool. And they love learning about Hawaiian culture because a lot of times when you're in the Peace Corps, you're just, uh, these people over there, they only see what they see on Facebook or something that they see on TV. So they think Americans are just white. You know, there's just one, one type of American. They, they don't know that there's European Americans, there's African Americans, Mexican Americans, Asian Americans. So that was one of, the most fun part about Peace Corps for me was being able to share my culture and share how diverse we are as Americans. And after doing all the reflecting, I, I figured, well, being American doesn't necessarily equate to ethnicity. All it does is equate to nationality. And so that's how I, I ended up navigating through my self-identity crisis. So I, I was just telling them about Hawaiian culture, all the stuff that we ate, like poi, how you could take the taro and smash it up, add water, and you have this kind of paste where you can eat. And I would tell them about Hawaiian language. I even taught them Hawaiian language, even though I was supposed to be teaching English, you know. But it's very flexible and you can kind of make your service your own. So yeah, in the beginning, I, I struggled really hard with trying to find my identity as a Hawaiian and 
I ended up just staying true to my roots. And I feel like that that's what I always did. And that's what I learned in school growing up is that us as Kanaka Maoli, as Native Hawaiians, we, we just have to go at our na'au, our, our innermost being, our gut, you know, that gut feeling, and just follow that. And that's, that's pretty much what I did. And if you think about, uh, you know, people growing up here in Hawaii, especially in Hilo, we come from a small city. Not a lot of people leave. Everybody gets comfortable and you know, stays in their own kind of routine. They, they don't want to explore and, you know, not even, sometimes people don't even want to go to Oahu or Maui or Hawaii. They don't, they don't even want to leave a different, go and go to a different island. So when I first moved, uh, studied abroad in Spain, that opened my eyes to so many things. It's just my perspective of the world just broadened so much because you don't really realize how small Hawaii is until you leave and how different we are from other Americans, other people outside of Hawaii. So th that was one thing that I, I learned while I was over there. And why I think it's important for Native Hawaiians to go, to go out and explore and learn about different cultures is once, you, once you're able to learn about others and uh, connect with them, you know, on a very grassroots human to human level, you learn a lot about yourself. And our kupunas, our ancestors back in the day, they were wayfarers. They, they weren't scared to go and travel and, you know, sell, sell the seas. I mean, if you think about it, how did, the, how did the Polynesian culture reach Madagascar, reach, you know, all the way across the world? It's, it's because they, they were fearless. They, they were travelers. And even our kings and queens, they, they spent time in Europe, in other countries as well. And I think a lot of us forget that part about Hawaiians. You know, we're, we weren't just farmers that stayed and, you know, uh, harvested kalo day and night and just went to the, to the beach and caught fish and just hanapa'a all day long, you know? We, we, we were very smart, intelligent people that loved seeing the world. And that, that's something that I, I, I want to share with other, other natives, the pigeons coming out a little bit, the other native Hawaiians, the other local people, Hawaiians here in Hawaii. So yeah, I, I think being in the Peace Corps is, is a good way for us as native Hawaiians to explore the world and share our own culture with people and you know, just share a little aloha spirit with places who might need a little or a lot of aloha in their life. So, yeah, it was it was a very blessed experience, and I, I would encourage anybody, not even Native Hawaiian, to go and consider the Peace Corps because you can learn so much about yourself and other other cultures while doing this. Um, let me see if I can share more pictures. Is everybody still seeing this? Yeah? Okay, cool. Uh, it won't let me uh, go down, but I can just keep going out. That was my classroom. I just want to share some pictures with you guys, if that's okay. Uh, right there. Oh, that's where I showered. That's where I took bucket bats. Uh, my my record for not showering is ten days. That's a cool fun fact. I lived in the I lived in the highlands of Madagascar, so it was really cold. And I lived in a brick house, which is pretty much like a like a cave because there's no sen there's no insulation or central heating, so it got really cold. I, I think where Christina lived, it, it was pretty hot. Yeah, so I think we had maybe yeah. Was it really hot? Maybe you took way more showers than um, I did. In the summer, it would get up to 110 degrees, but in the winter, it would go down to 30, so it would get kind of cold. And I live in a like a shack with no insulation, so it was also really cold. <laughs> yeah, but it it was uh it, yeah it was pretty rough because you know here in Hawaii when it gets to about 60 degrees, that's considered freezing for us. 
So I had to learn about layering and uh, sleep with about five blankets some nights. Yeah, then go out. There you go. And that's our, our cabinet. That's where we would use the bathroom. We'll skip over that. <laughs> if anybody wants to learn more about the Peace Corps, we can set up a, a different call. <laughs> and so that's the house I lived at. It was a brick house and I lived on the top of it. And I just had a, a bed inside with my uh, stove area and some buckets and a dartboard and nunchucks as well. That's it. Here's some kids. I guess I'll just stay like this so I can scroll down. Some kids, uh, rice fields, they harvested a lot of rice. But it was cool to see the green, especially if you went down to the coast, the east coast. It looked so similar to Hawaii. They have the traveler palms, they have red fruit trees, they got mangoes, they got a lot of things that you see, a lychee. So it really felt like I went from the big island to a bigger island. And like I said, a lot of rice. Yeah, rice is kind of a part of our culture here. That's me working the rice fields. Uh, bad roads, we had very bad roads where I lived. I lived four hours from the capital, but it was only like 70 kilometers, but because the roads were so bad, it, it took so long. Yeah, sometimes it would get stuck as well. Uh, and we, we would bike, bike to each other's site. The closest volunteer to me was a two hour bike ride. So we we go back and forth and visit each other. And uh, my friend uh, Jesus, he was a Mexican American volunteer. So we we actually related more with each other than we did than I did or we did to other Americans because our our cultures were a little similar. We we were kind of the minorities. And growing up in Hawaii, the minority is the majority. Uh, because because there's so many different cultures. So I, yeah, I, I grew up kind of being immersed in a lot of different cultures. So that, that that's something that I feel like we have an advantage here in Hawaii. We're, we're exposed to so many different ethnicities. So we, we, we're pretty used to coexisting like that. Yeah. And now this is my, my site, Latinaini Bacado, we had a, a English center opening. We did a world map. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but I'm pointing on the, the Hawaiian Islands over here. It's on the left side of the map. It's not supposed to be that big, but I made it extra big. So it's not pr proportionate to the actual map, but I, I felt like I had to make it a little extra big. Yeah, we eat a lot of rice. And that, that's the computers uh, we got for my school. Uh, and I would always, I would always rep my, my hometown, Hilo, top of my hat. I wore things that said, on my hat over here, it says Olelo Hawaii, which means Hawaiian language or to speak Hawaiian. And this month is actually Mahina Olelo Hawaii, which is Hawaiian, Hawaiian language month. And, that's that's one of the reasons we wanted to do this specific presentation during this month of February. So it was really fun being able to share my my culture with them and language, and they would even get shocked to hear the similarities as well. Yeah, as as you can see, they yeah, this is how they some of them look. My friend uh, Maafaka. And then some beamers, of course. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm sure you guys all seen those green Madagascar lizards. It's so green one, sometimes they have little red specks. Those are from Madagascar actually. So it, it, in a weird way, I feel like we were always connected for Hawaii and Madagascar some way. So it was really a, a blessing in this disguise for me to, to go to Madagascar. Okay, let's see if I can stop sharing. Yeah. And the funniest thing is that 
I didn't even want to go to Madagascar. I wanted to go to South America because I wanted to be fluent in Spanish. And I was just applying to Peace Corps and you can do your two pre your three preferences. And when I was choosing, I chose Peru and Costa Rica. And on my third choice, I just wanted to fill it out. So I chose Madagascar and I was like, oh cool, Madagascar, like the movie. And that's the only reason I chose Madagascar. And it ended up being a blessing and I, I was able to go there and it became my second home. So yeah, that's, that's kind of my experience in the Peace Corps. I'm sure Christina has had a different experience. Other volunteers have had different experiences. So yeah, mahalo for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, I'm also, I'm also Portuguese, so we can talk a lot. So um, yeah, if I'm talking too much, just let me know. <laughs> Um, I, I want to ask questions. Someone has, Alex Sosa put a question. They said, how did they respond to the Ike you shared and did they even know where Hawaii was? Yeah, they, so it depends. I think the younger kids didn't really know much about Hawaii, but some, some of the older people, they maybe saw it on TV or they heard about it. Um, they actually heard about the volcano erupting back in 2017 or 2018. So yeah, they, they don't, they don't really know much about it besides it's a tourist destination. It's a vacation spot, but uh, for the Ike specifically, the, the knowledge that I, I shared, they were, they were all surprised because they just, first they didn't know Hawaii. It's kind of like how we don't know Madagascar is a place and we don't know that there's 30 million people living there. It's the fourth largest island. They speak Malagasy, all these things. So that's the way where we react to that. That's the same way they react to hearing that Hawaii is a real place. There's two, about 2 million people living here. It has its own language uh, and all this stuff. And uh, the movie Moana was a big help actually. I got to show them that. and. They got to, uh, I got to just point out similarities. Like, hey, look, we got coconuts too. So stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they really loved it. Yeah. Oh, you heard the story on a, uh, yeah, NPR. Yeah. So that was, that was a couple years ago. Awesome. If anyone has any other questions, let me know. If not, and if you, Alex and Mandy, if you're interested in joining the Peace Corps, uh, feel free to message me or Christina. Or if you guys just have any questions right now about Peace Corps in general, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have regarding the application process, uh, certain country, what the Peace Corps experience is like in more detail. Just let us know. Um, I can put my our email in the chat. Uh, that's a great question, and maybe Christina can answer this too. Uh, for me, in the in the beginning, it was trying. It really was trying to figure out who I was or what I was trying to promote because that that was a struggle because I my culture is so important to me and I never I never ever considered myself American you know so being over there and you know having everybody think I'm American that kind of threw me off uh, especially, especially like uh, the word haole you know we have the word haole which is tourist over here I mean um, it's like foreigner uh, that when I was in in Madagascar, I had to take a step back and realize that I was a Haole for the first time in my life. I grew up my whole life as the local, I've seen tourists come and go and trying to speak our language, eat our food, you know, enjoy the sights that we have here. And I would get so mad at them, like, well, why do they come? What do they do is they just pretend to be like us, they take, take, take. And then I realized that's exactly what I was doing in Madagascar. I was wearing their clothes. I was eating their, speak their language. And I, what I realized it was, was, I was doing it out of respect. 
that's all because I wanted to be like them I wanted to try to fit in and relate to them better by learning their language and you know eating their food so when I took a step back and realized that I it kind of gave me more empathy for you know people coming here trying to learn our language um so so that was uh all the social the um, self conflict all of those things was was really hard for me mentally but besides that it was um staying healthy there, there's a lot of new things you know I, I had appendicitis when i was there i had surgery i had to get my appendix removed um i had schistosomiasis which is like this waterborne thing i'd please go inside of my feet and lay eggs and i had to dig it out a uh, food poisoning all those things but peace corps they're totally equipped with staff and medical, uh, medically trained professionals. So they take very good care of you. But um, yeah, those bad times make for good stories. That's how I like to think about it. Yeah. And just, well, um, Christina, what was, was your most challenging? Just quickly, what is just, that? I'm sorry. Um, just for people who are not on the Zoom, uh, I'm going to read out the question. Um, so uh, the question for everybody out there is, what would you say was the most challenging part of your volunteer service? Uh, so as we take on questions, if you can just read it out, because not everyone. Oh, okay. there. But thank you so much. Yeah. I, I love how you were so honest. And at the same time, <laughs> you're like, they, I mean, the medical services are there. So it, you're and you're here today. <laughs> so you're alive. So thank you. Still alive. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. If, Christina, did you want to open up? Oh. Uh, or it's um, up to <laughs> pressure. I would agree with some of what Kamaka said, like the, just like, you spend so much time alone and um, thinking, <laughs> uh, or at least I did for like the first few months, um, like at night when everyone goes to sleep, I was just like, wow, what am I doing here? <laughs> um, but I think it was a really good, um, I don't know, I feel like I grew the most that I've grown in my life in that time period. Um, and just like learning how to uh, not just like support the community the way they want to be supported, not just what Peace Corps wants from us. Um, and so like kind of figuring out that balance and also, um, I guess physically the most challenging part of service was walking the eight kilometers to the main road in the 110 degree weather to get to the grocery store. Um, <laughs> that was probably the worst part. But I liked saying that I could do it to my neighbors. I was like, yeah, just walk. Even though like while I'm walking, I'm like dying. But I'm like, oh yeah, I could totally do it myself. Uh, Cause I just wanted to show, I don't know, especially because I'm, um, I was like a small woman <laughs> that looks really young. I just wanted to prove my independence to them. So I was like, yes, I am going to walk in 110 degree weather to get to the grocery store. Um, but it was really hard. The, hot, the heat was definitely, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I think a lot of it is just us trying to fit in and not embarrass ourselves. <laughs> That's what Beast Corps is all about. <laughs> uh, we have one more question. Uh, when in, uh, I'm going to guess, when as an undergrad should we start looking at signing up? I would say maybe junior year, going in, maybe senior year, going into your senior year. Uh, I think. Uh, couple months, maybe half a year to a year ahead is a good time to sign up. I think I signed up my last, the, my second to the last semester at UH. So I fall of 2015 and I went, I left spring of 2016. So I think that that's a good time, but it's, I, I would say it's never too early to start considering it, to start writing, working on your resume, your application statement, and finding letters of recommendation or people to write letters of recommendation. Uh, do you have anything to add to that, Christina? Um, I probably around the same. I left September 2018 and I had signed up maybe about a year before that. Um, like starting to get those applications done. I don't know, I always wanted to do it. So it was just like a matter of like when I wanted to leave.
Yeah, and the thing with Peace Corps is there's no age limit. You can do it uh, when you're 21, you can do it when you're 86. It's, it's really up to you. But I would always encourage people to go at, when we're young. You know, we don't have a lot of obligations at that time. And uh, it's a, our 20s is all about growth, you know, about learning and finding out who we are, what we're capable of. So I feel like it's the perfect time to go. But, you know, if it, if it doesn't fit inside your life, you know, some people in their 30s, 40s, 50s. So it, it's totally up to you. Uh, what opportunities have opened to you post this position? What type of work do you want to go into in the future? Uh, for me personally, the, I mean, it, it allowed me to get this position as a Peace Corps recruiter. So I guess that's one thing. <laughs> But a lot of people like to go into, you know, international work in the, um, foreign services or work with a, a non-governmental organization such as USA, JSI, or, you know, work in Washington, DC. For me, it was really about the, what I learned and the experiences that made me who I am that, that is helping me do everything I'm doing now. So after I got back from the Peace Corps, I did something called the Race to 50K where I paid off $53,000 of student loans in one year by just doing odd jobs, asking people, what could I do to help them help me? I documented it all online, shared it with everybody. And the reason I did that was because of the confidence that the Peace Corps instilled in, into me. Like, and like everything from living frugally to saving my money, uh, to sacrifices, you know, we're, we're away for two years, I extended for, for three years. So the sacrifices that you have to make in order to accomplish something, being able to go out in the community and just talk to people, ask people for help. And the, the Malagasy people it inspired me because they're, they're some of the, mo the poorest people in the world. Madagascar is one of the poorest countries in the world. They live off less than a dollar a day. But when I'm walking to town, they invite me in to eat. They share food with me all the time. They're so happy and they give so much, even though they have so little. You know, and here we are. Sometimes we don't even want to give like 25 cents to the people ringing their Santa Claus, uh, ringing the bell, asking for donations with their Santa Claus hat outside of the, gro the grocery stores. But th these, these people, they just give so, so freely. So like all that kind of just inspired me and you know helped me believe in the kindness of others and all the experiences like you know surviving appendicitis and like teaching a classroom uh, like 200 kids in a classroom uh, a foreign language and trying to to just figure out um like christina period of growth and that's the most thing, that's like what I took um, out of the, of the Peace Corps. So, yeah. And just being able to connect to people. I think that was my favorite part. And uh, well, something if that. You can, if you can reshare the last uh, few lines of what you said, just because you froze up. I think there was some issues with your internet. Oh, okay. <laughs> so many issues. You were like, the most thing I took back, and the next thing we got was, and that's what I took back out of it. <laughs> and it's like a secret now. We don't know what it is. <laughs> if you want to if you wanna know, you're just going to have to read my book. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, I, think, uh, I think I said the most thing I took out is, is that um, realize that uh, people are inherently kind. People are willing to help you if you just ask and just connecting with people, being able to connect with people at a very human level, very grassroots level. I think that's something that helps you with anything in life and whether that's a job or relationship, you know, with your friends, anything, it, it, really, it really helps you gain the confidence and uh, be able to just go out on your own and um, do honestly whatever you want to do. After the Peace Corps, I, I felt like I can do anything. There's nothing I can't do. That's how confident I was. Nothing I do now will be harder than the Peace Corps. That's my mindset. Yeah. Hope you guys caught that. <laughs> I kind of agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a, yeah. Post YouTube videos on that. 
I also grew out my hair for two years. It's a, a time lapse video on that. <laughs> That's why I had long hair. It's <laughs> great. Nice. It, it looks, yeah. Uh, I just was going to ask for anybody out there uh, if anybody joining us today is an undergraduate student, uh, we also have the Peace Corps Prep Certificate Program, uh, which is an academic program that can go along with, uh, honestly, you can work with a lot of your degrees. Uh, I actually happen to be the Peace Corps Prep Coordinator here at UH Manila. So uh, I'll put my email in the chat or you can just contact me at jbarzel at hawaii.edu and uh, we can talk about how we can work with your academic programs. And it's never too late. So even if you're on your last semester, uh, let's meet. Uh, it's possible you may have already fulfilled the requirements. And why it's helpful um, is because as part of you applying to the Peace Corps, it'll actually ask you if you've done the Peace Corps prep program. Uh, and then it'll ask you like upload some documentation that, which is what you end up working with me on. So yeah, multiple ways to kind of uh, get yourself prepared uh, for whatever sector you may be interested in going into. Well, if, if anyone doesn't have any questions, uh, like I said, feel free to reach out to us on email. Um, sometimes we're at Campus Center tabling. Maybe you'll stop by over there and we'll be there so you can get some, some booklets or we can just talk story. But feel free to reach out at any time. We're always happy to share our experiences with everybody. Yeah. There's no additional, any additional questions or Christina, anything else you want to add? Um, I mean, I can answer <laughs> the question too, but I don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll do a separate event where yeah. we'll, we'll, it'll be our main yeah. speaker. How about yeah. that? <laughs> I mean, yeah, sorry well, for, go ahead. As I said, sorry for the technical difficulties on my end. Oh, no, it works. Yeah. It, it all works, no worries. Well, if there's no other further questions, I, I do want to thank Kamaka and Christina for providing us a wonderful opportunity to learn about their communities. I know Christina didn't talk too much about her own experience, but she kind of gives a few uh, little kernels there. And so hopefully that keeps people coming back for more. I know I'm interested to hear about uh, how there wasn't any form of other uh, transportation, <laughs> like a bicycle at least, <laughs> that you could have done besides walking. Uh, but yeah, no, thank you for a beautifully thought-provoking event and uh, all the knowledge you provided today and uh, just being such great resources for our community on the Peace Corps. And even though so many challenges are out there and I, I love how you um, talked about how um, the, the struggle of trying to not seem like you're culturally appropriating, basically. That's kind of what it came down to, you know? You're like, I don't want to just be I want to be respectful by, you know, wearing the clothes if, you know, it's because it's most like it was given to you as a gift uh, and eating their food, but not seem as though, you know, you're like trying to take their culture away from them uh, as you may have experienced that from the other lens being here in Hawaii. And you're like, yeah, hula skirts and like, really, <laughs> is that really? So um, it's, it's a fine border. And I think a lot of it comes down to um, just people's modesty and humbleness and just it comes from a good heart. It comes out of good respect for the communities. I think people see that. And um, and as odd as, you know, food may sound, uh, you're, you know, you know, they're trying it out and enjoying it because there is such great divisions that can be brought together just by sharing food. So um, as long as you have a good appetite and you're willing to be a little adventurous, I think that's one of the one of the questions the Peace Corps application should have. <laughs> I don't think it does, but it should have. Uh, but yeah, thank you for allowing us to be a guest at your home to you know and continuing to uplift voices. Uh, last but not least, thank you for everyone who joined today's uh, event. We deeply appreciate your interest and support in sitting down at our table to learn about Indigenous nations uh, near and far through our cultural talk story.